There's a show out there called Ted Lasso. It's one of my favorite shows, and it just wrapped up its third and final season. It's not a religious show, and it does have quite a bit of bad language, fair warning. But there's something about this show that has captured the attention of a lot of folks in the Christian community, a lot of pastors and Christians. And I think the reason why is because it stands out. It's a feel-good show, and it makes you want to be a better person, which is, is pretty rare for, for shows nowadays. The main character in the show is a guy named Ted Lasso. He's a Midwestern football coach, and he is hired to coach a British football team, what we would call soccer. And the whole reason that he is hired is because the new owner, Rebecca, wants to sabotage her ex-husband's uh, beloved football club. Uh, she wants to get revenge for how her ex-husband, Rupert, has treated her over the years. And so she hires Ted because he has absolutely no business coaching soccer. He has no business doing this. He's a football coach, an American football coach. But it's amazing because over the course of the show, something amazing happens. Over time, he captures the hearts of his players, of his fans, and even the media and news reporters. He's so positive and so optimistic and so persistent that you can't help but like the guy. He has this amazing ability to connect with people. And there's this iconic scene in the first season where Ted and his boss Rebecca walk into a pub and they come across the former owner Rupert, Rebecca's ex-husband. And while they're there, uh, Rupert tells them that he has just bought some shares in the team in an attempt to kind of weasel his way back into the owner's box. And so Re Rebecca is upset by this, and, and so Ted kind of steps in and he makes a wager with Rupert. They decide to play a game of darts. If Ted wins, then Rupert will give up his uh, partial control of the team, leave his ex-wife alone. And toward the end of the match, Ted is behind. He needs two triple 20s and a bullseye to win. And so as he prepares to throw his next dart, this is what Ted says. You know, Rupert, guys have underestimated me my entire life, and for years I never understood why. But then one day, I was driving my little boy to school, and I saw a quote by Walt Whitman. It said, be curious, not judgmental. And I like that. Ted throws a dart, hits a triple 20. Then Ted continues saying, so I get back in my car, and I'm driving to work, and all of a sudden, it hits me. All them fellows that used to belittle me, not a single one of them were curious. You know, they thought they had everything all figured out, and so they judged everything and everyone. And I realized that their underestimating me had nothing to do with who I was. Because if they were curious, they would have asked questions. You know, questions like, have you played a lot of darts, Ted? He throws another dart, hits a triple 20. Then Ted says, to which I would have answered, yes, sir every Sunday afternoon at a sports bar with my father from ages 10 till I was 16 when he passed away. He threw the last dart, got a bullseye. Ted concludes his game. Be curious, not judgmental. This morning we are continuing our sermon series called Toxic Christianity as we look at some of the toxic behaviors that we experience inside the church and outside of the church. And our goal is to find healing and wholeness in Christ. Our first week we talked about hypocrisy. Our second week we talked about cynicism. And our third week we talked about legalism. And then last week we talked about tribalism. This morning we are going to be talking about the toxic behavior of judgmentalism. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For the judgment you give will be the judgment you get, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. 
Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. The Cambridge Dictionary defines judgmentalism as tending to form opinions too quickly, especially when disapproving of someone or something. And oddly enough, the Cambridge Dictionary even gives us an example. I'm trying not to be judgmental about my daughter's new boyfriend. I feel like that's an example that I'm going to need to hold on to here in about 16 years or so. But judgment is not necessarily bad. Judgment is not necessarily a bad thing. We need judgment in our world. Legally, people need to be judged. We need to be held accountable for breaking laws and harming others. Sometimes people literally need to go before a judge and be judged. So judgment is not always a bad thing. It can be good. It can be important. But this morning, we're really talking about judgment in terms of when we are condemning others or when we are too quick to form negative assumptions about others. And this is a toxic behavior that we really need to watch out for in the church. In his famous Sermon on the Mount, Jesus offers these words of warning about the dangers of judge, judging others. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For the judgment you give will be the judgment you get, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. This warning is something that we all need to be reminded of from time to time. We tend to judge others. We blindly believe rumors. We pass along stories of gossip. We make assumptions about people based on the way that they look or how they dress or the car that they drive or if they're from Meigs County. And like we talked about last week, we judge people who are not in our tribe. When we engage in this toxic behavior, it can bring real and lasting damage to people's lives. In fact, it can ruin people's lives. Maybe you can think of a time in your life when you were judged too quickly by somebody and you were proven wrong. Have you ever misjudged somebody or made a false assumption about somebody only to be proven wrong? Or have you ever pointed out a speck in your neighbor's eye only to realize that you had a, a log in your own eye? When have you been guilty of judging other people without even getting to know them? And then on the other side of that, maybe you can think of a time when you were judged by someone else? Have you ever had somebody else make a false assumption about you? Has anybody ever called you out unfairly? Has anybody ever judged you or, or failed to give you a chance? And how did that make you feel? How has that caused you harm and pain and brokenness? The truth is, we have all judged others, and we have all been judged by others. And unfortunately, this is something that Christians not only do, but it's something that we're known for. Christians are often known as being judgmental. In a recent survey of about 3,000 American adults who describe themselves as non-religious, 54% considered American Christians to be judgmental. Perception is reality, and Christians are being perceived as being judgmental. This is a real problem. And the truth is, it's not just a Christian problem, it's a human problem. But as Christians, as followers of Jesus, as representatives of Christ, we need to do something about our judgmentalism. We need to change our behavior so that we can uh, more accurately and lovingly uh, represent and reflect Christ through our actions. So how do we do that? How do we do that? How do we become less judgmental? Well, I wonder if Ted Lasso is onto something. What if we were curious, not judgmental? 
What if we asked questions not to try to pin people down or, or put them in a box, but to genuinely get to know them? What if we approached things like we didn't already have all the right answers? What if we humbled ourselves in a way that led to developing relationships and sparking curiosity? When you are curious and ask questions, then something amazing happens. You hear people's stories. You learn about their passions. You get to know them on a deeper level. You connect with them on a deeper level. So this morning, I want to offer three ways that you can cultivate your curiosity. Number one, ask good questions. Ask broad, open-ended questions that foster conversation and discussion. Don't ask questions just to prove your point or to get a quick answer, but ask questions out of curiosity, simply because you want to know more about that person and no other reason. Number two, talk less. Talk less and listen more. This is hard to do. <laughs> Have you ever asked somebody a question and while they are giving you an answer, you are already thinking about what you're going to say next. Don't do that. <laughs> I do it all the time. But next time you're in a conversation with somebody, listen to what they're saying. And then don't immediately respond. Just wait. Just listen. You might hear some things that nobody else would hear otherwise. Number three, be open. Be willing to try something new. Don't just prejudge something or focus on why you think something won't work or even give it a chance. Instead, be curious. Give it a shot. Ask the question, why not? Why not try it this way? We've never done it that way before, but why not? As Christians, we have an opportunity to be curious, not judgmental. We have an opportunity to enter people's lives and to share in deep and meaningful ways. I love the story that Cecil Northcott talks about when she describes a group of young people who were having a conversation. They were all from different countries. And one night, they were discussing various ways of telling others about Christ and how other cultures do this. And there was one girl from Africa, and they turned to her and they asked her, Maria, what do you do in your country? And Maria said, oh, well, we don't go on mission trips and we don't hand out pamphlets. But instead, we send one or two Christian families to go live and work in a village. And when people see what Christians are like, then they want to be Christian too. I like that. I think that's amazing. What if we lived our lives like that? What if instead of being Christians that were known of, as being hypocritical and judgmental, we were able to enter into people's lives and make an impact, be so compassionate, be so loving, that other people wanted to be Christians too because of the way that we acted? What if our curiosity made a path for us to enter into people's lives to get to know them on a real and genuine level. Tom Long, a preaching professor from Candler School of Theology, once said, instead of poking a finger in our neighbor's face, we can reach out mercifully to wipe our neighbor's eye. Rather than being judgmental, pointing out other people's sins and mistakes and flaws? What if we led with compassion? What if we focused on reaching others for Christ through living lives of love? After all, it was Billy Graham who once said, it is the Holy Spirit's job to convict, God's job to judge, and my job to love. It is our primary job as Christians to love. We forget that sometimes. When I was in college, I worked at Camp Lookout, which is a United Methodist camp up on Lookout Mountain near Chattanooga, Tennessee. And one of the things that I really loved about working at camp is we only had one rule. There's only one rule, and, and that rule was we're in the build-em-up business 
not the tear them down business, which meant that camp was a place where kids could come and they could build each other up, they could build themselves up, they could build the environment up, they could experience Christ in a safe and loving environment. And this rule is a borrowed rule. It really comes from Jesus' golden rule at the end of his Sermon on the Mount. As Jesus says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. If we followed this rule, it would change everything. We wouldn't judge others. We would show compassion. We would be forgiving. We would live out the Christian life. In fact, Jesus even says this rule is the essence of all that is taught in the law and in the prophets. How might we live into this law, into this rule, more fully? How might we reach out to others with love instead of with judgment? Let us be curious, not judgmental. Amen.